come to this um, business uh, through a, a career in public accountancy and corporate finance, and I've been in this um, business for four years, and I, I love it with all my heart. Um, in the last four years, our little land trust has grown from two to eight uh, staff people, and in that period of time, we've increased our operating budget from about 300000 per year to $1.6 million. We're projecting for 2009. We have uh, not much in the way of uh, financial reserves. We do have a couple of uh, two $1 million pots of money on our balance sheet that are restricted, and I want to get back to that later. So hopefully some of those notes will, um, will resonate. Uh, maybe you can see where your land trust fits into this. Um, my experience is that uh, the last four years has been exactly like my startup experience in high tech meaning that we are lean and we are smart and we work very hard. So in the context going forward, I'm not even going to say some of the normal platitudes such as cut expenses because um, we don't have much to cut. And some, some of you may not either. Um, so my survival advice um, is uh, three things. The first is, and this is I think the very hardest, is face the facts. Uh, I don't know about you, but if, uh, if you're in a leadership position at a land trust and you've been um, enjoying success, to see the chart start going down is a really sickening feeling. And uh, it takes a lot of courage to really just sit down and take a sober look at what is happening with your organization. So I'd encourage you to gather all the data you can. What are, what are the trends in your contributions? Um, what's happening with, your, with the funders that you've been working with? And I really encourage you to create a 12-month uh, rolling cash forecast. This doesn't have to be a complicated tool. And um, I can, at another time, just kind of walk you through the basics if you'd like me to do that. I'm actually going to move that out to 24 months because the more I do this, the better I sleep at night. Um, and so now you've gathered the facts, you've created that cash forecast. Chances are, if you're like uh, me, what you see scares you to death. Um, but, but this is uh, the office of denial. And you know, denial is a, is a powerful force um, in human nature, and it doesn't help you solve problems. So uh, without, without fear, you must, uh, you must face those facts and continue to face the facts. Um, back in uh, the beginning of December, our development director, Stephen Slade, um, made a projection for contributions, and he made a high and a low, and now Two months later, we've looked at the low, and he said, you know what, that low looks way high. This is scary stuff, but you got to face it, and you got to continually refine that forecast. Um, so now you've, you've got, gathered your data, and you know exactly where you are. Not happy with it yet, but, but there you have it. The second piece of advice um, I would give to you is be transparent. And this means being brutally honest with your board and your staff. My staff knows exactly uh, where we're at, and, um, and some of it's not pretty. In fourth quarter, our contributions were down 38% over the prior quarter. Now, including January, we're better. We're up at 21%, thank goodness. But half of our major donors fell off the cliff. You know, we're talking hedge fund managers and people who probably uh, will never recover in the way that they have uh, previously supporting us. As I said, we're facing a cash crisis because state reimbursements are on hold, monies we've, um, we've advanced that were due to be reimbursed to us, and we are spending copious amounts of money saving projects that were already done, and I'm sure this, this is something that other people um, are experiencing, and that's a, that's a very painful um, way to spend the money right now. So in our um, January board meeting, we were still reeling, um, trying to gather the facts, and um, I hadn't even had a chance to really analyze them to figure out what they mean and what we're going to do about it, I felt compelled to just share these facts. And that was one gloomy board meeting. All the staff attended. Um, but you know what came of that is I, I really felt like the board and staff became deputized in the problem-solving aspect of this. And so there, there, are, there won't be any surprises. People are coming up with creative ideas, and they, they take some of that um, burden off of my shoulders, You know, going to the question of burnout that I think was really a, a great one to bring up. So now you've gathered the facts, you've transparently shared them, now the fun stuff starts. Now I encourage you to be creative and entrepreneurial. 
and this is parenthetically within the context of legal and accounting rules, okay? Um, but just, just a couple of ideas that we've come up with. Um, looking at our balance sheet, I would encourage you to evaluate your balance sheet. If you're like us, you don't have uh, pots of financial reserves. But as I said, we do have a couple of nice pots of restricted funding. So we will be aligning our priorities, not the way we would normally do them, but to help us um, charge some of our staff time to these uh, restricted pots of money. Um, another idea we have, which is kind of a, a contingency idea, is to ask a major donor of a restricted gift if they would consider unrestricting it. And that, if you do that, and uh, you would need to make sure you get good documentation that that money is unrestricted um, at the donor's bequest. But it is, in these times, a potential tool. Finally, I would encourage you to focus on planning during 2009. Uh, I think a lot of us believe there's not going to be a lot of money out there for closing deals. So what a great time to plan so that when we come out of this, um, hopefully in 2010, that we'll be very strategic uh, about, about the, what we're doing. On a long-term get creative um, basis, I would encourage you to do a few things, um, some of which in, in even our short tenure we're reaping the benefits of right now. And one of them is diversify revenue sources. So this is a good business practice, really makes sense in our business. Uh, I was fortunate to come into the land trust. We have a um, forest that we sustainably harvest. We can't go do every year, unfortunately. Um, so we're on a three to five year rotation. Uh, it's out at, at, we're not going to be tapping that in 2009, but uh, it does provide a source of revenue injection um, every three to five years. Wonderful for us. And um, we also have a little bit of rental income. We have now um, some ag revenue, which is going to help us. And we have interest on endowments. We have grants from multiple state agencies. Of course, most of them are frozen, but at least it wasn't just one state agency and as well as uh, federal grants. So there's some diversification even within the agency category. And we have grants from multiple foundations, not just one. So um, woe wo be the land trust who is dependent on you know, single source of funding and it frozen. My heart goes out to you. But I would encourage you to plan this way for the long term. How can you diversify our revenue sources so that when contributions go down or a certain source of money is frozen, um, you're not uh, totally at a loss. Um, in the, also in the long-term category, I would suggest that you design all your projects to be self-sustaining. We did this um, from the beginning because we had to, because we didn't have money to, to fund these activities. So ways that you can do that is, for instance, conservation easements, we have to require an endowment we can't, because we can't subsidize uh, the monitoring and the baseline and the other activities. So because of, of our nature of our finances, we cannot accept um, a an, an conservation easement without an endowment, and we've been lucky um, lately to get some very generous endowments. Another idea is to raise stewardship monies along with your capital campaigns for acquisition. We, again, we had to do that last uh, summer. We were raising money for um, an acquisition, and we had to raise the stewardship money as well. We raised $1.2 million, and that's one of my pots of money sitting on the balance sheet. So we'll be doing a lot of... Um, work related to that project so that we can tap into that pot. Thank goodness we did that. Um, and also, I would encourage you to consider acquiring profitable land, working land, so, for instance, working forests and working farmlands where you actually can make a little money. Um, also encourage you in the long term to design, now as you're planning in 2009, to design your projects to fit where the funding will be not where it is now. And I think of this as a soccer analogy. You don't go to where the ball is, you go to where the ball is going to be. And so we all have to um, keep, do the very best we can to figure out where that's going to be um, at the light at the end of the tunnel here. And finally, in the long-term creativity um, category, I would encourage you to develop strong alliances. I can't underscore how important this is. Keep your foundation partners apprised of your situation. So you've done your cash flow, you've done some creative ideas, you've maybe figured out how you're going to make it. Share that fact that you have a plan, let your funders know that so that you don't come to them with a big surprise. And then finally, um, strive to be good partners with your peers so you can ask for help when you need it. As we did, let's see, January 4th, 
we had a uh, project that was due to close on January 8th, and the state funding freeze made that closure impossible. The landowner did not want to extend the option. It was the first of a very strategic um, group of three parcels in the Watsonville Sloughs. And I called up Audrey at Post and I said, Audrey, what do you think? You want to get in this deal? And uh, they grabbed that and uh, she and her board and her staff and my staff and my, uh, our consultants, in four days, we scramb all scrambled and we saved that project. Not only the project, we saved the land trust bacon because there was <laughs> some ag revenues and a gift um, associated with that deal. And uh, we will be forever grateful for that. And I only hope and pray that I can, our land trust can sometime in the future play that role for another land trust. So this is a great community we're part of, and, and, I, and I hope we can continue to help each other out. So uh, basically my three pieces of advice is um, face the facts, be transparent, and get creative, and you can do this, and good luck.